let's talk about the movie that is out right now. Inside Out 2. First off, if you haven't seen Inside Out 1, you should see it. But if you, but I don't think it's required for you to see the second movie. The second film is a standalone film on its own, so it's not required that you see the first one. However, I think the first one gives cute context, like that Riley, the age as she was in the beginning, and then this age as she's getting older as a teenager. You know, a lot of people were like, this film is really good for parents. I agree. But I'm not a parent, and it was still really good for me. I think this film is good for everybody. However, if you have really, 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 really young kiddos, I still think it's fine for them. I just don't know if they'll get the depth of it. Um, so I really think this film is great. It's still, I feel like it's bridging the gap between um, adults understanding their kids and kids understanding, maybe kids not understanding adults, kids understanding themselves and adults understanding their kiddos. So I think, sorry, that fan was really loud, but I needed it because I burnt these cookies. I don't understand. Um, but I really think that, oh, it was hot. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, that was hot. I really think it is beneficial for families to watch it. I'm not gonna give any spoilers in my talk, so zero spoilers. So we'll start off with that. Um, but what I will say is I think that this film does a really great job of giving insight into anxiety, but also giving insight into the way in which we live our lives and how emotions can impact the decisions that we make and how our mindsets all interact, all of our thoughts and beliefs all interact with one another. I think it does a really cool creative depiction of those things and I, I love that. I really, really love that. I really thought it was really creatively done. I think this film should win many awards. I think it's creative. I think it's age appropriate. I think it is honestly a film that can bridge many gaps between different generations and I really find it really helpful. I saw it twice. I would recommend people seeing it twice because I think the second time you pick up on different nuances that you don't pick up the first time. So I'm not going to give any spoilers but I am going to pose questions that if you do decide to watch the film or if you have already seen the film that you should ask or think about. Number one, if you seen the film and you decide to see it again a second time I want you to watch the film or if you haven't seen the film and you can even because I got so engrossed in the film that I like I couldn't analyze the film and I love analyzing films I went to school for journalism I've produced many films I've made films I'm a filmmaker last year uh, a project that we did won awards across countries across states you should check it out it's called spiritual warfare especially if you like mental health stuff um, check out BecameBrave.com, BecameBrave.com, and you can buy the book Spiritual Warfare and then watch these video projects alongside of it. And it also is a, definitely a great conversation starter that relates to emotions and mental health and naming it. So just throwing that out there. But our film project won awards all over. So I, I love to analyze film. So this was brilliant and I really enjoyed this film. But so questions I would pose if you have not watched it or are going to watch it. And if you can't answer these questions while you're watching it, it's because you're so engrossed in the film and that's good. And so if the second time you watch it. But take a look at when other characters, you get a little insight into their mind, who is in the driver's seat of their mind. So when mom or dad are talking, is anger in the driver's seat? Is sadness in the driver's seat? Is envy in the driver's seat? Is anxiety in their driver's seat? Think about that. And then if you're a parent, think of ask yourself that question, right? Who's in the driver's seat of my mind? Um, so that's something to think about. Even if you're not a parent, I really related with it as a mentor because there's a coach in that film and there's a moment, I won't spill it, I won't share it, but there's a moment where I got to see myself in this coach. This coach was trying to kind of like tame some things down, but then we also kind of got to see what was in the mind of the teen as they're being asked to Change some things down. Um, really, really, really creative. But so I related with it too as a mentor, as a leader, as somebody who values mental health and faith. Um, another question I think is really important. Sorry, guys, as I'm just washing my dishes. 
You get it. Be productive. Wash your dishes with me. We'll wash our dishes together and do some work together. We'll be productive in the house together. Another portion that I really found interesting or a question that I would pose is what are our beliefs about ourselves? I'm again, not going to name everything, every detail, because I don't want to, I want to be a, a video that's not a spoiler at all, but still gives good insight. There's a portion in this film project that is kind of communicating a little bit about what, how your beliefs are built. And so when I was watching that, I was like, what a creative way to think about what our beliefs are and how our beliefs can change. And I was thinking like, what is a reoccurring belief system or word or sentence in which I say about myself? So it could be, I'm a great poet. I believe that about myself. I'm a great poet. But it also could be a negative talk, like no one likes me, you know? Um, what is the belief system or the pattern in which it's a part of your personality, but it's a part of your belief system? Is the narrative or the sentence you keep repeating? Why is it? What memory does it come from? Yeah. That's powerful to think about. Um, and then, as you're watching this film too, think about what are some of the beliefs that you picked up as a kid and why? And do you still need those beliefs? And what new beliefs could you pick up? Those are some of the things that I think are awesome. Um, there also was a portion that I thought creatively depicted what sarcasm is. <laughs> Random fact, I hate sarcasm. I feel like I never understand it ever um but i thought the way they depicted it was quite funny i'm curious depending on you guys watching it so feel free to come back and comment on this video if you have seen it or if you haven't seen it if you haven't seen it if you have not seen it after you see it come back and comment if you have seen it i would love your thoughts did you feel like the way the film articulated sarcasm was accurate i say this because i think some people have um relationships with sarcasm i've, I've noticed this when i've dated people like there's a family system that like uses sarcasm as a form of language um and i view it as like really unhealthy and i view it in a couple of like it's passive aggressive or things like that but other people are like no this is how we joke and like understand one another and it's kind of funny like we like that about us so i'm so curious like what were your thoughts on the way sarcasm was depicted whatever side you're on the fence of whatever side you're on i'm just really curious how other people um saw sarcasm depicted in the film and again, I'm not giving spoilers. You'll have to see it for yourself. I think those are the main things I, at least that are top of my mind right now. There's so many ways I would love to end up analyze it. I even thought about doing a little bit of a, like a course. I'll explain later. I have a lot of ideas and I, when I'm ready to release those ideas to you guys, I'll let you know. But until then, if you are looking for something that can continue on the development and the growth in which you've learned from this film, or continue with conversations about emotions, or um, this might be the catalyst to spark dialogue with your kids, I really recommend uh, Spiritual Warfare. You can check it out on becamebrave.com. Um, it has a poetry curriculum, but then in addition to the poetry curriculum, it's like a guided journal for students to write and process with one another. So I highly recommend it. And yeah, let me know if you watch uh, Inside Out. Cleaning a coffee pot. If you watch Inside Out 2, what your thoughts are. I personally thought Inside Out 2 was better than Inside Out 1, but another friend told me absolutely not. Inside Out 1, she felt like was better. So what are your thoughts? Do you like Inside Out 1 better or do you like Inside Out 2 better? And I think those are main questions for today. And I hope you guys have an incredible, incredible day. Don't burn cookies like me, because then they look like this, and that's not good. But they're pump faking me, because look, it looks good. And then the back, it's like, I don't know what that's about. Yup, tastes burnt. I was bringing these cookies to a party. I'm not going to anymore, because they're burnt tasting. Anyway, you all are amazing. I hope you have an incredible day. Remember, you're loved, you're brilliant, you're smart. Somebody thinks you're cute, honey. But the most important thing is that you think you're cute. And you're loved and you're the bomb. Toodles.